We are nearing the halfway mark in the party poker big game. We've had more than our fair share of twists and turns in what has been an intriguing game so far. And there's every reason to think there's more to come. This 48-hour non-stop game always looked like fulfilling its promise. After all, some of the best players in the world travelled to the Montesino in Vienna. They've come with overflowing pockets, they are willing to face the player evictions and prepared to battle the ticking clock. And as you'd expect, the results so far haven't disappointed. The evictions have, as always, added that extra little bit of spice to the big game. This year is no exception. So far, we've had four, each one changing the dynamic of the table. The first to feel the full force of his fellow players was Iliodorus Katamatakis. With Katamatakis' departure, the table opened up to Tony G, who despite going on a losing streak, galvanized the table and stirred Alec Torelli into action. Roberto Romanello was enjoying a profitable spell at the table, which may well have accounted for his fall from grace. It's Roberto. He left with a profit and a shrug as he moved on to another game, hoping to return at some stage. Good luck. Alec Torelli looked like he was in for the duration, but the players around this table had other ideas. Unfortunately for Alec, the big yeah. game is over for now. He took his dismissal well, but knew a winning situation was passing him by. A new injection of players in cash then helped the stalwarts around the table pick up the pace and build up their reserves. None more so than Phil Locke, who took his profit and loss account to a new high. Sorrell Mizzy barely had time to get into the swing of things when the vote cut him down to size. I'm afraid we're going to say goodbye to Sorrell Mizzy. Sorrell, I'm sorry you're going to have to leave the table. Mizzy vowed to return, revenge never far from his mom. Evictions aside, there's been plenty to keep this table ticking over. Some stories have a familiar ring to them. Locke's commanding lead. Basil Yeish building on earlier successes. Wow. JP Kelly bar the occasional loss to Locke, making good headway. And Ignat Liviu taking great strides to make the most of his time at the table. He oh, ships man. it! But whatever happens in the next few hours, these players can't escape the threat of yet another um, eviction. Wow. And the leaderboard will go some way to deciding the outcome. The most active player, i.e. the player with the highest V chip, is exempt. The newest is also safe. But for the rest, it's down to player politics that will decide their fate. Just before we get back to the action, we'll take a glance at the leaderboard. Locke, still dominating this table with a staggering profit of 145K. The rest of the field looks pretty healthy. Only Sam Trickett, Sorrell Mizzy, and Mike Sexton feeling the pressure. Full table at the moment, all eight seats filled, but of those eight, only Locke and Trickett have been in from the start. Those evictions have certainly changed the nature of this game. The threat of more to come is ever present. It all adds to the pressure these players are feeling. So far, only two of the original lineup have survived. It's time to get back to the action. Uh, we got a good friend of ours uh, joining us in commentary, Leon. Leon, you're a good friend, but I always butcher. I always butcher your name. Gr Gr Groenwood, Greenwood. Well, it's actually Grunewald. One of the owners here at the beautiful Montesino Casino in Vienna. I mean, uh, beautiful location, beautiful festival here. Three weeks of events. We had the Premier League. We have the big game now. Of course, the WPT. Uh, it's day two right now. So uh, a lot of players, a lot of action. Uh, tell us about it. You know, it, it's good to have a fresh perspective from somebody that's not a player, that's not a commentator, that's not just, you know, the guys are uh, generously hosting us here uh, for these three weeks. Yeah, well, I'm doing this for the first time, that's right. Uh, really excited to be here, to actually see all this in live, and uh, it's really great. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I watch all these shows uh, in private, actually. Uh, many of you know that, and uh, to see it live now with all these uh, funny technical things here, I see all the statistics. Uh, I can actually see what the people have. That's really cool. I know. So. <laughs> and you are, and I mean, I, <laughs> I, I want to say this again, because 
I mean, we've been know, knowing each other for a bit now, and I know you're an actual real poker fan. Like, a lot of people in this business, yeah, of course, they, they're good at what they do, but they're not really poker guys. You really are. You watch these shows over and over again. Sometimes you can go by memory, like I can say an episode of this show. You go, you see the lines, you play, of course. Sometimes yeah, well, you get smashed. Tell you what, I, I, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that, though. <laughs> It's like, I really want to sit down there, you know, I would like to grab a seat and play with these guys, uh, you know, it's the greatest guys in the game, wow. sitting there, playing, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. That's what we were talking before with Giovanni also, but Sorel, had, had, after spending two hours in the booth, played maybe his hand a little bit too more aggressive and he cost, he cost him a little fortune. On his yeah, hand, you get kind of overexcited <laughs> in the booth, you see all those fancy plays and then you get out there and stick. 40k with the yeah. 710 offsuit, so it's kind of strange. Speaking of hands, yeah. Fabrice, what do we have going on here? We have a little piece of uh, maybe a history between the two players because uh, we, we, so we've seen Sam raising earlier with aces, being 3-bet with, uh, with, uh, by, by um, Basile, right? And now here we go again, and uh, Sam again has a good hand, has a best hand with ace-king, and yeah, he decide to 3-bet to him with an ace-10 from the small blind, so it's gonna be... I hope Basil doesn't make any mistake on this one, because he might... Let's see if he's strong enough to not to fall in a trap. Because I don't see how Sam is gonna lay his ace-king down against a very aggressive Especially player, when like he's down 20k versus yeah. a very aggressive opponent, I mean... He's not folding. I don't think he's folding. He's not folding. He's definitely not folding. So hopefully Basile doesn't level himself like huh. any calls. Oh, this might yeah, be. there we go. Oh, wow. I, I was definitely not expecting that. Yeah. That's well, not I, I was. That's, that's you were? See? Yeah. New perspective <laughs> here. That's good. That's good. That's fresh. <laughs> He looks yeah. like he's calling, so... <laughs> he doesn't put himself in a good position here. It's very tough to play uh, after flop unless you flop a uh, 10, 10 high board, but it's gonna be... It's gonna be hot for him now. So he, he put almost 6k pre-flop with an ace-10 off. Out of position. This is gonna be over, Fabrice. This is... Uh, it's gonna be a C-bet here. It's like probably, probably, so I don't know, you're the professionals, but I would say he's going <laughs> to probably see bet like about 6,000 or something like that, and he's going to fold after thinking of it for one minute. <laughs> yeah, but what about, I mean, uh, what about the check raise here? Because what, what, what do you think if you're some shot here? The guy 3-bet me, I 4-bet, he calls. So you you more likely put him on a medium pair, right? He could have 7s or 8s, something like that, you're even 10s. Right, right. So, I mean, now if... Basile takes uh, the crazy line of check raising, he, he could win the pot. That would be interesting. I don't know if he's going to do that. I think Basile here just, if he's he shoves, he's almost doing it for value. Like he thinks that the guy has air and ace 10 might be the best hand. Yeah, but are you going to call with ace king? If, if he puts shot yeah. on ace king, are you going to call? Oh, no, 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 no. Ace king is never going to fold there with 9k behind. Yeah. Nice little pot there for Chartier, a strange call by Basil, you know, just considering the fact that the guy only has 9k behind. New blood on the table in the form of Basil Yeish and Samuel Chartier. Both making a big impression on this table, more to come after the break. The big game is just going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, they all started out around 20k each. Now there's Phil sitting with almost 200k. Yeah, tell Take me what eight. happened there. Did he did he rebuy or is it just like 20 Phil? straight and up to 165 yes, now? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, I'll give you a little recap actually. Yeah, do that. Uh, I see the numbers here, but Phil Lack bought in for 20, then just crushed the game. He did a lot of strange spings, a lot of squeeze, a lot of small bet, a lot of wacky stuff. Uh, uh, just, you know, just playing really well, uh, picking up pots uncontested, just just crushing the game. But that's not his usual game, right? Because if you look at his high stakes game, I watch them all. Uh, Phil is normally the guy that plays very tight, doesn't do any stupid moves that's once in a while. That's what's working for him. That's what's working for okay. him. I think he's really exploiting his image and he's doing really funky stuff that just works.
Well, what happened? Let me see. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I have to look at who's in, who's in the first position here. It's uh, Sam Trickett, actually, right? Yep. So this is a good flop for Sam. Let's, I don't think he's going to be worried about the flush draw there. So this is for me. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be the continuation bet, and I think. Uh, to bet 1,600. The thing is, the other guy called is Basil. Yeah, Basil. He's not one that likes to let go of hands, so I think he's got at least gonna peel one off. Well, I'm. Uh, I would say he's gonna race here, actually. Did he do it? No, he didn't. So it was worth a try. So he just <laughs> called. So now it's going to be interesting if there's going to be another club coming up, right? I, I want to see another club. An ace would kill it, so that's, don't do it. A queen would be good. There it, there is. it is. There it is. There's so, the I mean, queen. You, you, you just I wonder this. I, I, we, you know what's coming up, so it's. Uh... Yeah, well, this is what we want to see, right? So now it's not. Now it's now it's a hard time. So so Basil is <laughs> going to have. You know, he's got top pair, top kicker. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not thinking that Sam has kings, oh, no. right? Come on, he can have anything. He can have ace king. He can have a, a smaller ace. He can have jacks. So I think he's. He knows he's in front now. So Sam is going to. I don't know what it's going to put up. Two, three thousand, something uh, like that. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Forty. What do you think? Is a, I think a race is coming now. So. Now I think I think, think they're too deep for a race right too now. Deep. I think. Four thousand. Definitely. Uh, oh, four six is pretty high. I think. Pretty good bet. Three quarters of the pot. He's no. going for max value here. So Basil's got thirty left, and. Uh, it's definitely right? just a call. So, yeah, that's too, yeah, they're too deep. Yeah. Twenty-five to thirty. Yeah. He's thinking of a race now, though. Look at him. <laughs> it's funny because when you do peel and you do hit your queen, and and then now the guy is is potting into you, and now you kind of feel sick. Now you just wish it was a six of clubs, and you give up yeah. the hand. Yeah, and you have two. Fl he has two flush draws now, right? So Sam could have a flush draw in his mind. So maybe he should race now. I think I would race. <laughs> That's always an option, but. I think he was going to go for the call. Seven race. Oh, you're That's right. A race. You're right. You're right. That's, uh, I guess he's ready to ship it all in. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, once you raise there. Well, Sam is asking now how, how much he got behind. So. They are pretty deep. But at this point, when you make it 12.2. You got 18 behind. I mean, it's going to be hard. Yeah, to come call. on. Sam is going to ship here. There's yeah. no way he's going to fall. Oh, no, There's no, no way he's going to no, close. No, no. He's going to ship it, and then it's back to Basel, right? All in. Call yeah, he's all in. That's it. To all in? Yeah. And it was a call already, call. or did you say call? Yep. Oh, that oh, wow. That's a big, big misstep right there by Aish. That's too bad. He played perfectly so far. So he needs a queen or he needs an ace, right? That's about it. And this is this is where Sam Trickett's image pays. I mean, he seems like he's tilting. Uh, yeah, that that won't that's do it. it, and that's it for Yaish. Uh, he seems like he's tilting. He seems like he might be getting out of line, but but the guy's actually making all the right plays, just getting in tough spots. And uh, look how happy Sam looks. Basil Ye started out full of promise, but he's heading out the door, donating his 30k stack to Sam Trickett. Time for a new player to enter the fray, a huge name in poker. 2010 World Series of Poker main event champion Jonathan will be joining our big game, cash game here. Uh, they're playing 2550 with 100 straddle off, and it's, it's playing fairly big. Have you been uh, having a look at the table? Uh, I just arrived, to be honest, so uh, I don't know how's that going to look like. Uh, hopefully the uh, ante and hopefully the $100 straddle uh, is going to continue. I mean, uh, the more action, the more I like it. So uh, I've played some of those big cash games already, so I'm, I'm pretty used of playing those games. Uh, just gonna have some fun, uh, maybe bully the table a little bit, and uh, we'll see how it goes. There's a couple of guys that are there who have been there since the beginning. They're probably starting to feel a little bit of fatigue. Would you, you know, whereabouts would you be hoping to sit? Uh, to sit on the table, I don't even know. I mean, uh, I don't care to be honest. I mean, uh, uh, it's probably a big uh, advantage for me uh, if those guys are tired and stuff. Uh, they might uh, make some mistakes. Uh, I mean, for me, I'm just gonna play. I don't know, uh, eight, ten, twelve hours. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm feeling pretty rested right now, so uh, feeling uh, confident, I think, about the game. Okay, good luck on the table. Thank you. Cool, thanks.
Oh, look, look at this. A world down. champion. World champion's joining the game, John Duhamel. Hey He's going to be good for the game. I, I like to see that guy play. He's so much fun. Oh, on the big one. I like it. So what are we playing now? It's 25, 50, 100, and everyone anties 25 bucks. So it's three blinds. I like yeah. it. I like this. Cool. Yeah. And you have to, so at some point, develop a leveling war with at least one person at the table. Oh, I will. History. Well, maybe, more than one got their little maybe more than one guy. So, like uh, Dominic happening, Nietzsche you know? is yeah. uh, joining us in the booth yeah. right certain now. Certain things, huh? Well, this is going to be good to see how Jonathan Duhamel is going to play this game. Well, I, I don't really know much about him as a cash game player. He's more known as a tournament player, obviously winning the world championship. I, I've played with him in a lot of tournaments. I think he's very strong, but I don't know how he'll do in a cash game. He's, he bought in for a lot of money here, 300 big blinds. To raise 300. I, we'll see how he does. That's your target. Born. I think it's going to be pretty loose, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's kind of what, that's kind of his style in it. He's just he doesn't fold very much. He's very aggressive. So this is a raise from Sam Trickett with Ace Ten, and uh, Kelly here just calls with tens. Would you let's play also, it like that? That's also completely fine in that spot, I think, because Trickett is opening a very wide range, okay. and well, he's going to fold so much to a three bet. And fuck your tens are yeah. kind of an in-between hand where you don't really want to play a big pot, especially like 300 blinds deep. On the other hand, you could just fluff a 10 and just take it from there. And even if you don't fluff a 10, you Six have a check. pretty good hand. Eight check, two check. Checks Three around check. all the way to JP and he checks back. It's obviously a fine play here. No. Six check. So there has to be a bet now from JP, right? Well, yeah, of course. If it. I'm just going to assume it checks to JP again, and then he's just obviously going to try to take it down. Livy Yu, on the other hand, has a pair of fours, and he's going to he's going to try to protect his hand now and obviously lead out. He bet one thousand and fifty. He's obviously not going to win because JP is always going to call him. And, you know that's probably the end of that hand. Three call. Six four. Heads up. Yeah, that hand's not going to be very interesting. I just mostly expect I expect most rivers just to go check check. Yeah, we can hit a four or a deuce in the river. That's going to change some things. A deuce is not going to do anything. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Two queens are good. <laughs> we have a three here, which is kind of an interesting card because Livio now could consider leading out of the bluff because he could quite possibly represent a three here. So you think he's going to bet? I think he should, yeah. He looks like, like checking, though. I mean, his, his four is very, very rarely going to be good here, and yeah, he can you can actually make JP fold hand like tens here quite often. Yeah. Well, how much is he going to bet then? Well, I'm I'm guessing he's going to lead out for something like two k, maybe twenty two hundred. But Kelly's never it's gonna it's fold the tens now, right? Two thousand six hundred and fifty. Oh, it's oh, a that good is, bet. That's a really nice play by him. I mean, it's really tough for JP to call with tens here, because what does he really beat? Like, he would have to expect that Liviu leads the turn, and like when he leads the turn, he has to have some kind of equity in the hand, which means he has to have a flush draw, maybe five six, maybe like a hand like Ace five, and now it's just gonna bad again on that card which you know he could also have a three a three is quite possible as I've said before so he doesn't really beat that many hands except for like flush draws and you know. yeah you're right you're right he and, folded and he lays it down yeah it's great play by Livio like the three is one of, one of the few cards you can actually bluff in that spot because you can represent more hands it's very tough if you can only represent the queen but he could represent a queen a three there's so many hands well played by Livio who's also a very good online player known as Oh, human O online. So he's one of the very best. Nice hand. Yeah, we got a little bit tricked on uh, Ignat Liviu at the beginning. He looked a little bit uh, as a <laughs> calling station at the beginning. He was, I guess, he was just fishing for info, and then um, we heard that he was crushing the 2550 online. <laughs> and since we acknowledged that, we all looked like fools because he started crushing the game like really hard. So yeah, I'm not sure what you're on about. He's a really good player. Uh, <laughs> it's just yeah, he's been playing great actually. 
Look at this. Oh, you viewers can't see it yet, but I. Oh, now they can. Yeah, we can see it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. I didn't spoil it. Yeah. I'm like, did I? I'll I'm so excited if I see aces. I hope <laughs> somebody wakes up with kings now. I want to see some action. You want to see blood. You want to see blood. So does someone have kings here? We can see it. Well, Sam has kings like hand. I mean, well, it's like nine ten of hearts, like kings, yeah. isn't it? The nine ten of hearts. Three hundred. It's pretty sexy. Just a call though. Yep. Out of position still. I must have a better and animal. JP I gets in there, of course, with the king ten off. So oh, let's have a king queen deuce, but all hearts. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So what about that? Yeah. Oh, that hey, all hearts so would work. Just for uh, <laughs> the five deuce obviously calls. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty standard. <laughs> I mean, it's standard for Phil. He doesn't like folding at all. No. Give him two suited cards in the big blind. Oh, of course. He looks pretty. And yeah, there, it is. Is. there it is. There it is. I mean, it's like it's so rigged, it's not even funny. It's uh, You talk about online play, but look at this. We got the aces. We got uh, two. Oh. Check. Livio checks back, which I think is a really yeah. good. I think that's a really, really good play. A yeah. lot of people w wouldn't do here. I mean, a little bit of pot control, okay. a little bit of deception. That's an it's, mo it's mostly sport. deception than anything else, basically. Well, he has to bet now, right? Well, now he's obviously going to bet. Yeah. He has to. He's not going to get it. He's not going to give another free card here, I think. No, definitely not. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, Trickett here decides to just call with such a big draw actually raises. What do you think, Dominic? That's a very interesting. I think Trickett is probably just going to call here because he just. I don't know. It's a really, it's a really tough spot for Trickett. You know. I mean, he is out of position with a huge draw and a guy that. Usually when he checks back, of course, he's got showdown value, but... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like... Yeah, I thought he was gonna... Yeah, I thought so. I, I put, saw the... in the race, yeah. Yeah, I thought he was gonna raise. Well, like, what's gonna happen now is that Livia's just, like, gonna call... Call and, and probably call again if something horrible doesn't fall in the river. Yeah, yeah, that's... He's not liking it, but... Fuck. And the good thing about the check raise is that... Sam, Sam probably doesn't think that Livio is as strong as Aces right. here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lays, it, lays it down, huh? Yeah. Yep. It works. Nice play by Trickett here. You know, are you back on your game? Or was that just, like, standard? <laughs> what the hell are you trying to say? <laughs> I've been off it for 30 hours. <laughs> Sam Trickett, one of the original lineup. He suffered his fair share of highs and lows but he's still there and fighting hard in the party poker big game. This is Vienna, home for 48 hours to the big game six. And we are back at a full strength table, all eight seats occupied but a familiar story in that Phil Locke leads the way when it comes to profit and loss. Mizzy and Sexton struggling. And to add to their woes, it's eviction time with Michelle Orp. Okay, it's time for another player eviction. I can tell you that three players are exempt from this eviction because they haven't been at the table very long. That's Sorrel Mitzi, Samuel Charter, and Jonathan Duhamel. Also, the person with the most V-chips and the most active player at the table is also exempt. I can tell you that that player is Phil Lack. So that leaves you four players to vote for. That's Sam Trickett, JP Kelly, Mike Sexton, and Ignat Liviu. So if all the players could now write down the name of the player you would like to see voted off the table. Savage. Players, once you have written down the name of the uh, player you'd like to see eliminated, please put your card onto the glass face down. Okay, so he's voting Ignat out. Sorrel and Mitzi's voting Ignat out. Mitzi's got Ignat, I think. Uh, What's this? Oh, well. <laughs> Ignat, I think, again. Ignat, yeah. Oh, so he's out. That's easy, easy. This was easy prediction. Seat eight. He likes to isolate me, says Phil Locke. 
Sid A's Zignat, yep. Yeah. It's gonna be him. It's pretty clear who's the wow. Sid A again. It's like a... This is 100%. I mean, this is it. In a way, that's that's gotta be wow. Ignat. Everybody, wow! They don't really like him, right? And Duhamo, we it. have the whole table, the whole table. He's sitting there for 10 minutes and voted him out. I think, I think it's a first. I think it's a, definitely a first this time. <laughs> Ignat voted uh, Sam, by the way, but kind of irrelevant. I don't think he's going to do it. <laughs> OK, we have counted all the votes, and I can tell you that the next player to be eliminated from the big game six is... It's seat eight, Ignat Livio. I'm ever so sorry, wow. Ignat. I'm going to have to ask you to leave the table. <laughs> so it is really Ignat uh, should be voted off with a nice profit of 50k. And Dominic, it, it's kind of a compliment right there. From I mean, not kind of. It is a compliment from the whole table when uh, when a guy gets voted off unanimously after such a strong performance. Yeah, yeah. It's just you played really well from what I've seen so far. I played, I think, pretty good. I had really tough opponents in my on my left, so I couldn't I couldn't play uh, very loose like I should, like I want to play in a very deep stack and short hand in no limit hold them game. But I think I managed to play quite good. Out of all the players that you have obviously been spending some time with on the table, who do you think could last the distance? Sam. Sam is playing is playing great. I think uh, this format this deep stack format. He's playing aggressively pre flop and I think he's choosing his spots right. Excellent. Now you actually leave the game, I believe, up in money? Yeah, yeah like 50,000, I think. So not a bad day altogether? It's okay. So it is Ignat uh, to be voted off with a nice profit of 50k and Dominic it's kind of a compliment right there from I mean not kind of it is a compliment from the whole table when uh, when a guy gets voted off unanimously after such a strong performance yeah yeah that's just you played really well from what I've seen so far and it's obviously one of the sickest ever. right he he was off to a kind of a rocky start Sam Trickett put him in a lot of tough spot he was always isolating him tree betting him and you know he he peeled a couple off then there was one big hand where he called um, two big bets on a four bet pot with king high on an ace deuce deuce seven board and uh, won a big pot a 20 something k pot with with king high i think that just yeah <laughs> yeah that kind of shifted the momentum in his favor and he never stopped since then Shaji here is kind of representing the medium hand that he has, and it's going to be so difficult for him to play, even in possession. Do you do you set mine here, Dominic? How do you value? I can't really. Uh, it's 27 uh, for short here. Yeah, it seems fine. It's pretty deep. It's not necessarily a set mine, as you can continue on more <laughs> other boards than just a board that has a seven. Right. So it's completely fine to call here. I mean, you're in position. You can bluff raise a lot of boards. You can represent a few hands. Seems fine to call. Duhamo getting lucky here. Well, lucky, you know, it was a coin flip to begin with, and he just hit a nine. Still lucky, isn't it? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt, let's put it that way. <laughs> it's also kind of a good board for him to get some extra action on. Like, he's gonna... I think he's gonna win one more bet for sure. So what happens if Sam races here? I don't. I don't, I don't think he does. I'm just asking if he would. He would. Uh, he would be making a pretty bad play. Yeah, it's never. To begin happened. with, it would be a pretty bad play. Uh, it would never happen. Um, Almost never happen. And I don't think Duham is ever gonna fold. <laughs> I think it just goes check call on the turn, especially with added equity from the flush draw. I don't. Do you like a bet here? I think it's better to just check call here. It. it re this is really opponent dependent here, and it could go either way, but. I, Charles here is so aggressive. I mean, you, 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 you know, if you, if you think he's floating you with something like 10 jack, jack, queen, and well, yeah, there. then just you just clearly go for the right. call here, right? And then you just kind of have to close your eyes and call most rivers, <laughs> yeah, because like, but Dohamo disagrees 24 50. 
Oh, I like the bed, though. Keep that really small, right? Tiny, yeah. tiny bed. I like this. All right. It, it's kind of like a check call, in a sense. And the thing is, if now Chartier decides to raise, Duhamo has the extra equity in the pot to profitably call. Yeah, Duhamo's, like, he's just kind of trying to block bet here. Right. He's trying to put Sartier in a really tough spot with, like, the hand he has, sevens. He's just gonna, he's just gonna end up calling, and then he doesn't know what to do on any river. That's uh, an action killer on both sides, I think. Yeah, unless Chartier thinks he can turn it into a bluff. Into a bluff, that's what I was thinking, yeah. He, you're not too happy with that river if you're Duhamo, I think. No, uh, not at all. Like, he went really small there. Five check to the nine. I guess check, check, yeah. Um, the thing with Duhamo's bet is, I kind of think that's a tell that some players have. Like, when they bet really small on the turn, they always have something. They're not they're not stone bluffing, no, which is basically the only thing shot here beats. Yep. So, like, when he checks back the river, he only beats a hand that just turned diamonds on the turn. So, so, so I mean, they, it's actually a really good spot to turn your hand into a bluff. There. Oh, for Shatia, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, uh, I still want to talk about Mike Sexton here, so <laughs> I don't really get an answer on this. So, is it like, is he getting too old for the game? I want your opinion. Oh, on this is he getting guys. too old? No, is he getting too old, or is no, he's the just young not. Guns taking over? Let's just be honest. He's just not a good player in this lineup. He's clearly one of the weak players in this field, and I think everyone knows that. Let's just be let's just be completely honest. I mean, I, I think I have that. a lot of I have a lot of respect for Mike. I like him as a person, but in this lineup, which is really really sick, it was even tougher before when Ignat was there. He's not one of the best players. He's a spot, and everyone's gone after him. Four hundred. So I mean, my, Mike is an ambassador. I know, he's fantastic. He, he's, uh, he's an ambassador for the game. He doesn't get to play that much anymore. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So he's always commentating the WPTs, and he's playing a little more now, but... I honestly yeah. think he knows he's, like, the weak player. Uh, he's very, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad Dominic's here to say this kind of stuff. <laughs> Makes my life so much easier. <laughs> I mean, probably one of the best guys in the game and for the game. Just oh, he's his, awesome, he, of course. His image is just amazing. He's like so polite. Okay, one guy you'll never see refuse an autograph, even if it's just busted for the worst bad beat of his life. I mean, Mike is like the Wait, gentleman in poker, and uh, he plays a lot of home games. Look, look, look at this, guys. He's oh, all wow. in. And call. And call? All in and... Uh, okay. What? Yeah. What did I miss? Um, race. Free best shove 10 k snap. Yes, basically that's, that's about it. Uh, that's wow. that Roll seems it. a bit loose by Tricket, kind of. Very yeah. loose by Tricket. Come on. I also think he took a pretty bad hand to do it with. A stand just really. Plays. Maybe these two just have some kind of weird history we don't know about. Like, I, I mean, I've been I've been watching this. Uh, uh oh oh. We got an up and down now on the overcard for Tricket. Exciting. Nine a king or an ace. Can we see the river cut before them? No. Right? Yeah, we can't on. peek, no. Oh. Yeah. Not yet. They're working yeah. on it. Exciting. So they're talking about running it twice, yeah. right? No, one, one time, once. Oh, just, just do it once. Come on. Yep. Tens old up for Sorrel. That that was strange. I mean, I've been I've been here in the booth now 12 hours. Uh, that was a really big pot. Oh, they they looked at the second one, uh, and that was the which was. It would have been the ace if they would have done it oh. twice. So, oh. and what a life! Sam well. saw that. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just get in a lot of chips there. I mean, they get in like 90 big blinds. That is a lot it's of crazy. chips. Crazy. That is way too many chips. It's also crazy for Sorrel just to shove, but I guess I guess he made a really sick play there. Just shoving. Yeah, it, it went 311 and then just shove, right? I think it was bigger than 11, I just... Oh, 15, but 15. The same deal, 40. And just shove. Yeah. Wow. See, like what most people have when they over shove there, like when they make these really big all-in pushes, what do they have? Most Nines, Nines, jacks, ace king, Mostly ace even, queen. even smaller, or like they have ace king. Like yeah. they, they just they kept themselves, which means that they like, never have a stronger hand ever than tens or like jacks. So like they never have queens. No, and, like, no, obviously. Which is kind, which is why Sam called because Sam figured, well. Yeah, so but you're flipping with some hands. Very oh, I'm, few. You're I'm not crushed. disagreeing. I think uh, it's a terrible call. But, all right. You know. 
seven. It would have been the ace if they would have done it twice. So and Sam saw that. So four players. Six check, seven check. Commentate this, guys. Look at this flop. Look yeah. at the cards. This is I don't big. Yeah, you go, Leon. You, you go, Leon. All right, Leon. I'll, we'll let you have no, the yeah, shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, come on. I can't do that. But I'll, I'll give I'll it a try, though. It's I'll like, correct you if you go wrong. Here you go. <laughs> you got that. So what's happening? So uh, Trickett is leading out, right? And he got, uh, he's got three nines. It's got uh, Lark is calling. I don't really think it's a good call with two people behind, but that's just my I call, totally right? agree, yeah. I don't think that's a good one, but he did. And Duhamo is thinking, right, okay, he's got eights. He's calling, right? Call. Every Leo's single good, time. Dominic. <laughs> uh, he's got it. He's got it. He's yeah. got it. Maybe it's time for a new job. No, yeah. you do a great oh, one. I don't think so. <laughs> this is more for you, but it's fun to be here and it's fun to see the people. So uh, I'm hoping for an action card, and that's not an action card, actually. But that is pretty bad by Lark to call so, with the ace king. With oh, I don't know what. I mean, he trick it is gonna trick. Yeah, I think it's bad too. But oh, it is for now, pretty trick bad. It is but gonna I, lead out again. I guess he has position, but what is his plan for future streets? Yes, he, he has to call again now because he called in the flop. He has to at least call again now. No, right? there's no, no, no. Duhamel over folding. calling. Now I'm talking about Luck. Well, Luck is gonna fold. Yeah, Luck is gonna fold. Always. He's got Duhamel behind. And I Trickett's don't see Luck folding because he's thinking something, and he's gonna. Yes, he, he has something in his mind. We don't know. We don't. We never know what he has on the screen. Don't do that, Phil. Uh, he's full. Now, now it looks stupid. Leo, back to the <laughs> casino. You yeah. got it right. But still, why does he call the flop to fold the turn? He knows that Sam is going to That's why Yannick and I said it's kind of bad because he's got no plan for the turn right now. Oh. There he is. Oh. Boom. Destruction oh. by Phil. The G is the in G the is house. Out. The G is in the house. This game is going to go up, right? Ladies okay. and gentlemen, the game is out of the box. I mean, Leon, to answer your question, I mean, what is he going to do on what any turn, basically? He's just hoping right. He's just hoping that, you know, they give up, and then... That's why I thought he might represent, like, a full flop, full house, seven, full, something like that. Back to the action, guys, though, because here, Duhamel calls again a big bet on the turn by Sam Trickett, and now a total blank hits the river. So if he's good on the turn, he's always good on the river, right? Yeah, yeah. But, look, but then there's always the question, is the guy right capable now. of firing another one? Sam you know? Trick? <laughs> he, he sure is, but, but like, is he going to do it, though? It's kind of a leveling no, war. No, of course. Here. It is a leveling war, 100%. And yeah. then if, if you know he's capable of firing he another one. He should bomb it here. Do you agree? Like 15k, 16k, Absolutely, something Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and, I, you know, he could also play aces that way, you know? 10,900. There's so many more hands yeah. he could make. 10,000. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. I mean, that's three quarters of the that's, that's the, pretty big. That's a pretty big bet, and I yeah. like it. What it's so doing? tough for John to have a nine. Uh, and nothing. That's a and there you go. If you want my honest yeah. opinion on this, I think you yeah. should fault the turn. Yeah, I agree. He's just going to be. He's, he's not bombing almost a pot size uh, bet on the turn against two opponents. Yeah. In a, just, it's a, just a race pot. It's not a free bet pot. And, and even it's if he is, the, like, the worst thing he could possibly yeah. have is a draw. Yeah, with a lot of equity. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then he's just going to bomb you off on the river. So you can't really do anything. You can't check all this. No. We're doing. It's pretty it bad. I mean, I guess, we, I guess he made the move the river. Right? The river. Like yeah, you can't really call it. Yes, you kick the game up and win. It? Tony G has always been a presence here in Vienna, constantly threatening to shake up this game. He's had one go which fell short. Now he's back and wants to put the record straight. The first spell was very tough. I didn't get many cards. I got very lucky actually to to get out more or less even. So it's, it's all up to the session now how, how I fare. In regards to dynamics, it's difficult to tell. I haven't been at the table for a while, but I think it's probably games for loosening up as, as we go along. Players get tired, get stuck, and they're chasing, so I guess it's, it'll, the game will keep improving. He's looking very unhappy, Tony G. Go on, I the think. G, go on. He's down uh, 13,550 from the previous session. Just He just picks up from where he left. Uh, it's a shame. I mean, he's uh, he's. I mean, it's not like the guy's not gonna top up just in case. Uh, <laughs> we know Tony's gonna. Yeah. He's gonna make the game really interesting now. Yes. I'm actually excited. Same here. A, a guy like Tony just changes the dynamic at the table a lot. I think. Yeah, he does. This is. Like he just. 
Most people think he's crazier he's than he actually crazy. is. He's really yeah, not. No, he's really not. not. JP Kelly is here pretty much from the beginning. So now it's like 16 hours. The guy has not said a word for 16 Eight. hours. He's Hold. still got a really hungry, concentrated look on his face where he's just, you know, very, very sharp, very intense, very tough Hold. player. Look at him. I mean, the guy hasn't slept for like 20 hours, even more maybe if you play the cash game. I guess he's, I guess he's used to it. Wow. I mean, that's just tough. He, he plays in a lot of big cash games. He's used to playing tournaments too. Well, like long days, you know, just, he's fine with that. He can handle it. Three check. Four check. Bring in the player seats. One minute. One minute. Uh, five check. Eight okay, check. looks like we got a pretty big multi way pot here. Sorella has just flopped top set and he checks it back. Is this the right play? You well, I, I, I guess, yeah. I couldn't really closely follow the action, but on the board this dry, with everyone checking to him, he just figures Four they check. all have nothing and the battle film is just always going to take it down. And he's just trying to hope someone takes a step on the turn, which is very likely five that someone's going to do it. 50. And Sam just turns like one of the best cards for him, which is the Queen of Hearts, giving him a That's giving right. him a gut shot and a flush draw. So I I'm, I just expect Sorel to race here. Because it just uh. that looks, looks like right. Yeah, I mean like if he calls yeah, you, he's just gonna end up giving a free card to anyone else who wants to join, you know? Like you can just if it goes bad, he calls, and then you can actually, you actually have the odds to call with like a gut shot or something. And Sorel wants to charge the good draws. He doesn't want to give any free cards, and he's obviously going for the race. Good so play by Sorel. What is Sam doing here now? Yeah, Sam is just basically in a really tough spot, as we've already said. He is out of position. He has a he has a really good draw, and I'll be honest, if he if he just had like a naked flush draw with nothing to go with it, he's just better off letting it go. But if he he has a really strong draw here, the Jack Nine of Hearts. One of the very best draws you can possibly have, so you just, he, he's kind of forced to call. There's nothing else he can do. Going all in here would just be very... I guess it's kind of too deep for that play, but... So racing was never an option here? No, not at all. Five check. And Sorel is obviously going to bet here, because... What about four, seven in hearts? 4-7 in hearts or the 7-9 of hearts, but these are two hands. And, you know, it's just, people just don't always have that. <laughs> it's really, really tough to have exactly 4-7 or 7-9 here. And I also don't think... I know Sam is really sick and he's capable of doing it, but like in a cash game this big where I don't think he's like used to this level, he's just going to be a nit and just fold. No one you know. It would be a really sick play to just jam here as a bluff. But I don't think he's going to do it, no. Very few people are capable of actually doing it. There's a lot of money at stake. And while it might be a good play in theory, no one really does it. Like, I've seen so many spots where I say, oh, that's a good spot to check race the river against, like, some guy who obviously made a really thin value bet. Welcome to the Austrian capital, which is playing host to the Party Poker Big Game 6, a 40-hour cash game littered with players being evicted, players leaving, and players being busted out. There is no quarter given or taken around this table. Talking about a very long time here. Like Actually, I'm Tony G world. here. Yeah. Fair force. You're talking about that. It's been all the sports being played for a long small race here, 250. I don't know why he's doing that because like the standard in that game has been 300. And no, usually people. Oh, there was a straddle on. There was a 200 straddle on. So that's why he did it. There was a oh, okay. No, I just heard it was a straddle. It was 100. But what is, what is going on there? Why is he going for 250? So so far, I don't think it looks right. I don't. Well. Um, is there anything on the screen? I heard in, in, in Macau, I heard this. Oh my god, Tony G flops the set here in the big game. And he's up against Philak, who flopped top pair with the best kicker. 
And action. Shivani right back into the action. Yep. In, in China. I'm back. It's great timing, right? <laughs> we're gonna see we're gonna see a big pot here, guys. I think so. Let's just hope no diamond comes up for the sake of that's a big juicy ace or something. Or a that, That's a really good card. Here we go. This makes the trick for sure. Go on, Tony. He has to bet out now. Don't check. Come on. That's good. I like the over bet. Did he over bet? How much did he bet? 3K. No, that's pot. He pot. pot it. Nice. That's the Tony G. Yep. That's the Tony G we know and love. So Lark is just, just calling, right? Yeah, just calling. Lark is just in a world of pain again here. So now we need a queen or an ace, right? Uh, she gets yeah, some action. She get, she yeah, get, even, even get a queen. We, even if, as long as we don't get a diamond here, I think there's there's going to be some action. That's a bad card. Very bad card. That's a really bad card, but it's not going to go money. check. Bad call. Most likely, yeah. I like it. Tony G over betting again. I like it. Great play, but yeah, not. Yeah, there you go. Ball. And there's no, I mean, oh dear. Yeah. that's Tony G's image paying off again. I went broke with a set. Yeah, yeah, that's I, just I, a I, snap I, I, I call there. <laughs> yeah, you should have at least thought about yeah. it. Yeah. Give it 20 the seconds. <laughs> and that's uh, Roberto Romanello right there, one of the biggest <laughs> winners in the big game six playing, I believe, in the day two of the WPD. Yeah, yeah, he's still there. Great guy, great player. Uh, I, I think mean, he's one of the very best. One of the very best. Did you uh, have two pairs? He should be on this show. Get him on here. Uh, he's still playing, man. We tried to get oh, yeah, him well, on here. <laughs> well, just tell him to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best memories they have. Uh, I I just got a sponsorship from Party race, Poker. Right? I'm just uh, starting to travel the circuit about a year and a half ago, and uh, it's, it's Bratislava, right after Vienna, actually, a year ago, exactly. And uh, we go there. Uh, Roberto ships the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I was there. After he does that, he throws a big party at the Kempinski, one of the nicest hotels in the world, and just invites not only everybody that was on the rail and from the staff and the other players, everybody from the casino. After the shift end, they all invited to his party. I mean, that's something. And I mean, of course he won big, but not. it was like 200k first prize. Yeah, so like it's Roberto's not just like the nicest guy. The ever. nicest guy. He's ever. a very good friend of mine, and I, I'm always happy to see him do well. Yeah. Six. This is just going to end up with Tony G taking a stab. And Chati is most likely going to call here, I think. He has an up and down straight draw. That's a good Trying to work out the fan situation in the booth right now. Can I get a water? So what is going on here? <laughs> did Mike Sexton just put on this quiz play? Did it just go bad call and Mike race? Yes. That's that's a Mike. really good play by Mike. Now he's taking a step, right? That's well good. Well Mike. Keep it up. He Probably is Chartier here has a double belly. The thing with the thing with Mike here is he's making a perfect play against the perfect type of opponent. And he's you know he's reading the situation very well. And I hope he's able to fire up here on the turn, you know. Keep the pressure on. Don't give up, Mike. He also has a perfect hand. He has a gut shot. You know, it's, it's and now that's a nice card to barrel again. I think he can easily... With, Mike, with Mike's image, this is definitely yeah. a card he should bat on. Yeah. It's a little too quick Go to on, bet, Mike. But Go on. Mike, we gotta do the trick. Half a it's going to work. Watch this, yep. watch this chart. One for the good guys, I Whoa. think. I think, yes. One for the good guys. Yeah. 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 There you go. Like he's just playing his image here, and I think he did a really good job. Really good job. Everyone thinks he's so tight, you know? And uh, to be honest, he's been kind of card dead. Don't waste it all once. Uh, yes, no, he's tight, but he couldn't have done much more, I think. I can, I yeah, but he's, he's still making moves like this. Right. This is just, this is just <laughs> great poker right there. I mean, two buttons of gas. I saw Chachi hey, just popping off. I did. Straight away. You, you, I can see like the brakes were seized up. For another 10k? Yep. No. The big game moves past the halfway stage, and the one story that remains constant is the rise and rise of Phil Locke. Rarely has the American taken a backward step. His profit exceeds the 130K mark. He is so far clear of his rivals and has vowed to last the course. Few doubt he'll achieve that. The only other man to have been in from the start has finally turned a corner. 
plenty of fresh faces around this table. And of course, Tony G has returned to the fray after heavy losses in the opening few hours. He left. On his return, he faced a 13K loss, which he has now turned into a profit. Still a long way to go in this game, and plenty more stories to be told in the Party Poker Big Game 6.